Hey guys, my name is Michael Watson and today I'm going to be teaching you automation and editing envelopes. I'm following chapter 19 in the manual, so feel free to follow along. I'll be covering everything from recording automation in arrangement view, as well as session view, as well as re-enabling automation, editing automation. So basically everything you need to know about automation. So I'm going to jump right in. Often when working with Live's mixer and devices, you'll want the control's movements to become part of the music. The movement of a control across the song timeline or session clip is called automation. And a control whose value changes in the course of this timeline is automated. So over here, I've automated the volume to go up over time. It's nothing fancy, but just so that you get the gist. So the same note gets louder, even louder, even louder, and so forth. Practically all mixer and device controls in live can be automated, including the song Tempo. So let's talk about recording automation in arrangement view. So as you guys know, this is arrangement view over here. If you're in session view, just hit tab. And here you can record automation in two ways. You can either manually change parameters while recording. So let's change the volume on the right here. And you can see that it's recording the line in. I'm just going to command Z to undo. Or well, the other way you can record automation in arrangement view is if you've got session clips over here that you're recording into automation view and these session clips actually have automation in them. I'm going to get to that a little later. When you're recording new material directly to the arrangement view, the automation arm button, this button over here that looks a little bit like a dumbbell, I guess. This button then determines whether or not manual parameter changes will be recorded. If this is off and I want to record it in arrangement view, click, tick, and tick, I'm changing tick. the volume, Nothing actually gets recorded. You can see a dotted line moving up and down, showing that a value is changing, but it's not being recorded. But as soon as automation arm record button's on, it records. Another thing that happens when you've got automation recorded in a track is it gets this little red LED type light. It kind of looks like a square, but it's a circle. Um, and when you see that button or that icon, then you know that it has automation recorded on this particular parameter. Okay, let's talk about recording automation in session view. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So first of all, your automation arm record button needs to be on. The track that you want to record needs to be armed. So that's this little record button needs to be red to prepare live that this track is going to need to be recorded. And the next thing you need to do is hit the session record button, this one over here. So not the arrangement record button, but the actual session record button to begin recording automation. So now at the moment, I don't have any clips. So I'm quickly going to just, uh, just going to do a simple little clip. All right, short and sweet. I'm All right, and now you can see there's a little LED on the play button. It's also possible to record automation into all the playing session clips. So um, let's just add another clip over there and another instrument. So I could record automation on all of these at once, even if it's not an armed track. Uh, to do that, you're gonna have to change your preferences, hit command comma, go to record warp launch, and then record session automation in. This needs to be on all tracks, so you change it just by clicking. There won't be any drop-down list. If I do that now, and I click, hit record. Click. So this, for instance, will allow you to overdub session automation into an existing MIDI clip without also recording notes in that clip. Sometimes you don't want to overdub these notes. You just want to do automation and that's when this is a great tool but if you want to change it don't forget to change it in your preferences and just to reiterate any automation in session view becomes track based automation when clips are recorded or copied into arrangement view so if i'm going to record these clips into arrangement view let's set the cursor over there um, i hit record and then play the sky Uh, you can see here that it recorded my clip into arrangement view as well as the automation it contained. So in Ableton Live, you don't have the luxury of changing your automation modes like you might have in a different DAW where you can typically decide whether the automation should be touch behavior or overwrite or um, latch. I don't know if those terms are familiar to you, but in Ableton Live, how automation works is that when you're using a mouse, recording the automation recording will stop immediately when you let go of the mouse button. This is referred to in some editing applications as touch behavior. But when adjusting parameters via knobs or faders on MIDI controllers, recording will continue as long as you adjust the controller. 
When you let go, the recording will continue until the end of the clip's loop, and then it will kind of play what's already been recorded, unless you overwrite it again. This is known as latch behavior in some applications. So to delete all the automation data, you can control click or right click on a PC. On automated control, so let's choose this one, and you can hit delete automation. The shortcut for that is just command delete, and you can immediately see the LED disappear and it jumps back to a non-automated value. You can also delete selected portions of automation um, by changing these little points over here. These are called breakpoints. We'll get to that a little later in this video. You can also overwrite automation. So in practice, you'll often want to try out new control moves without overwriting existing automation data and arrangement. You first want to hear what it sounds like before you record it. I mean, even if you did record it, you could just hit undo a million times. But it's easy to disable a control's automation temporarily to avoid overwriting existing data. And if you change an automated control's value while not recording, the automation LED goes off to indicate the control's automation is inactive. Any automation is therefore overwritten by the current manual setting. All you need to do to do that is playback without recording and change your volume. As soon as I did that, that little LED went off and now it's just playing at the constant button. Another thing that you noticed, well, maybe you noticed, is this little button over here, your re-enable automation button lit up. It is now orange. And if you want to go back to the recorded automation, you just hit that button. And it's playing my, uh, Clip over there. So this re-enable automation button serves two purposes. It reminds you that the current state of the control differs from the state captured in session clips or the arrangement view, and you can click on it to reactivate all automation and thereby return to the automation state as it is written. You can also re-enable automation for only one parameter. So I just added a line of automation here, and if you want to re-enable only one line of automation in one track, then you just go to the value that you want to re-enable, so this is volume, right click and re-enable automation. Now you can see that only the top one is enabled and not the bottom one, but if I hit this button over here, then they're all re-enabled. All right, let's talk about drawing and editing automation. So in the arrangement view, and in the session view clips, automation curves can be viewed and edited as breakpoint envelopes. So these kind of lines here and the shape that they create, so kind of like a step, that's called your envelope. And all these little points over here, these nodes or nodules are called breakpoints. So to see a specific track's envelope in arrangement view, you need to go to the actual track and hit this little triangle drop down and you need to choose the correct parameter. So in this case, it's pretty easy because I've only got one parameter automated. It's found in my mixer and it's my track volume. But similarly, you could go to any of these and look at their parameters. So I want to look at, say, the detune on my grand piano. So let's actually automate that. Now, any lines that I would draw over here, i.e. editing this straight red line, that would be my automation. And the automation appears on top of the track. But if you want the automation to have its own track lane, you can hit this little plus over there. And now you can see the tracks kind of expanded and I could draw over there. So you can see it says my piano sustain D tune. That's this track lane. If you have a lot of different automations on a single track, it's quite nice to separate them into different automation lanes. So you can see what's going on and it'll help you with editing. If you've got lots of automation and you're struggling to remember which parameters you automated, then don't worry. So you can just back into this dialog box and anything that has a red LED slash, it's not really an LED, it's more like a square next to its name, you know that there's an automated parameter in there. So in the mixer, there's an automated parameter. And at the moment, only my track volume is automated. But now when we add automation to this detune, then you can see there's an, another little red dot. All right, now, um, how did I just get this squiggly line? I just clicked B. It's the same as pushing this little button over here with your pen. And you can just draw the automation in. So at the moment, it's very blocky. And that's because I've got a grid. I can either switch my grid off completely. So if you want to take your grid off, you can hit Command 4. So this is with my grid enabled. It snaps to each quarter note. So down here, you can see I've got my grid set to a quarter note. I can change it with my different shortcuts. Commands 1, 2, 3, and Command 4 is to actually switch the grid off. So it's still got like little edges, but it's not snapping to a particular note. If your grid is on and you want to temporarily disable snap to grid, you can draw with Alt held down while you draw. Okay, now what if you want to edit the breakpoints that I told you about earlier? So when I'm not in draw mode, I just hit B again. 
I can see these different nodules and you can click on a nodule to make it disappear or you can click and drag to make the nodule move around. You can also create new breakpoints by going to an existing line and just clicking on it at a specific place to put a breakpoint and then dragging it around. If you hit command while you're trying to edit your breakpoint, it keeps it as a vertical line and you can't get any skew lines. So that's fine if you want sudden jumps upwards. So I've got a line over there. Often you need to put two breakpoints. That's what I want to do if I want to do a sudden jump. And then I take this one over here and I position it over the other breakpoint and just hit command. So I make sure it's a vertical line. You can also select a whole bunch of breakpoints like this and then pull them across to mass edit them. So what I did is I clicked in an empty gray region and I just clicked and dragged and whatever was highlighted, I can just click on one single breakpoint and it'll move all of them. You can also go to a line segment, hold shift and then click so that you can move that whole horizontal line segment around. And to curve a segment, hold alt on a Mac and drag a line segment to curve. So just to do that again, I held alt and then you can see my mouse gets like a little curve over there and then you can pull that line around. So this whole time my automation has been locked. That means that no matter where my clip goes, my automation is going to stay put in the time axis here in my arrangement view. But if I want to move my clip around and have the automation move with the clip, make sure to unlock your envelope. So click on this little button over here. And that way, when you move your clip around, the automation will follow it around. You can also lock clips in the options menu over here. Lock envelopes. When you're working with automation data in the arrangement view, the edit menu commands over here behave differently depending on whether or not your selection is within the clip track or its automation lanes. So to copy, cut, delete or duplicate automation from a track independently of this associated clip, make sure the parameter you want to work with is in its own lane. Once this is in its own lane, any edit commands applied to an envelope selection within a single lane will only apply to this envelope. So if I go to edit now and duplicate, then it's only duplicated this envelope section. If you want your edits to apply to both the clip and all of its associate envelopes, apply edit commands to a selection in the clip track. So command D to duplicate and it's duplicated everything over there. Note that Live allows you to copy and paste envelope movements not only from one point in time to another, but also from one parameter to another. So I can copy this section over here, command copy, and highlight this section over there, command paste, and it's copied this over. The reason it doesn't look quite the same is that the scale is different between these two envelopes. If I make it bigger, the shape looks a little bit more recognizable. And how does one edit the tempo automation? So Live likes to pride itself on its ability to warp different audio data to various tempos. So to edit the tempo, go to the master track. So that's right at the bottom here. Let's unfold it. Go to mixer and song tempo. And like before, you can hit B and draw in your tempo. You can also record in a tempo. Click. Change it like that. When adjusting the tempo envelope, you might want to scale the value axis display, which is the function of the two value boxes below the envelope chooses. So here you can decide the bottom line is 60 and the top line is 200. But if I know I'm only going to be working with tempos between say 60 and I don't know, like 120, then I change that. And now I know that this top point is 120 and this bottom point is 60. And it just helps with your visualization and understanding the data that you're seeing. Be aware also that these two values determine the value range of your MIDI controller assigned to the tempo. So if this is 60 to 120, then your MIDI controller won't be able to set the tempo to 50 or 130. So my next video, I'm going to be talking all about clip envelopes. And that's what you would find inside your session view over here. When you hit this little E, it's related to automation, but it is in a different chapter in the manual. As always, thanks for watching and for all the feedback you guys give me. I really, really appreciate it. Hope you have a lovely day further.